author, my name's Brittany, I'm a real hairdresser, and today I'm gonna show you a super simple technique to do a blunt haircut on yourself by yourself. Before we get started, I appreciate you being here, so make sure you like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. I'm here for you every single week, twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. So to get started, we're gonna need a pair of scissors or shears, a few clips, a comb, two rubber bands, and some hair. I'll link all the products and tools that I'm using in the description box below, but if you don't have some of these things or the exact version of these things, please do not stress at all about this. If all you have is crafting shears or Dollar Tree scissors, you'll be fine. You may need to clean it up a little bit more, but scissors are scissors. We are in the bathroom after all. You can cut this on wet or dry hair. Mine is pretty damp, but I am gonna be spraying it down because it is a little bit easier, in my opinion, to cut on wet hair. You do wanna be mindful before we get started though. Anytime you cut wet hair, it does shrink up when it dries. And as you know, if you have curly hair, you want to be a little bit more mindful because your hair will bounce up a lot more than mine, for example. I also want to point out that if you cannot tell by now, I am wearing tape and hair extensions. My real hair is about to right here, which I'm actually gonna probably cut it about right there. But to note, the results are gonna be the same even if you are just using real hair. It is actually a little bit harder to cut hair extensions, so please do not think just because I have hair extensions it's easier or it's going to look different, it's going to look the same. We need to section our hair off into two big sections. Now if you part your hair to both ways or in the middle, you're gonna to want to use a center or middle part. I pretty much always part my hair to the side, so I'm going to be using a side part. Now for the back, you're gonna to wanna to section it directly down the middle or a center part. Now that we have our two sections, we're gonna go ahead and shave off about a half an inch subsection in the back to create our guide. We're gonna comb this through. We wanna make sure this is all even, no rats, tangles, and we're gonna hold it with medium tension. Not too tight, not too loosey-goosey. And go ahead and add your rubber band kind of around where you want to cut. So we've got a ponytail on one side, now we're going to match it on the other side. When we cut this, you're cutting flesh against your skin. Is it flesh or flush? Whatever that word is, you're cutting against your skin. You don't want to take your hair out and cut like this. That's gonna over direct it and change the shape of the haircut. It may be easier for you to see, but that would be very incorrect. Let's hold it against your skin and use a mirror if your hair is super long or if you need to. So here we go, we're gonna cut right under the ponytail. See, that's actually a lot of hair. And we're gonna repeat it on the other side, cutting right against your skin, right under the ponytail. Ooh, I accidentally cut my shirt. Ah! Now we can slide these puppies out and we wanna check to make sure they're as even as possible. And you're just gonna basically do this by checking for balance just with your hands. Just kind of feeling it. And that feels good to me. Now don't worry if you have a lot of jaggedy edges or looking like mountains. We're gonna clean this up at the end. Our main goal right now is just to get a basic shape or our length. All right, great job, let's continue on. Now we're gonna take our first section down and take another half inch to an inch subsection, depending on your texture, hair type, thickness. Clip this back up, very important, you do not want to overwhelm yourself. Comb it down and we're gonna take pinchers or crab claws. We're gonna go in just like this, minimum tension, not too tight, not too loosey-goosey, just kind of medium. And again, we're holding against our skin. Do not go out here if you can help it. Again, it's easier, but it changes the shape of the haircut. It actually makes a graduated cut. It won't look too good for this technique. We're combing it through, taking my crab claws or pinchers, I see my point of reference or my guide, and I'm going to cut against it. I'm not cutting on top of it, and I'm not cutting below it, I'm just cutting right against it. Bing! Now I repeat this on the other side. Here we go again, another subsection on the side. Clipping this up because we don't want to get confused. Spraying it down if you're choosing to cut it wet. Combing all these kinky dinks out. Taking our crab claws, 
minimum tension, holding it against our skin, and we are matching it to our guide. Bing! Checking in between to make sure these feel even. Feels good to me. Same thing repeating itself, taking down a section, clipping it up. Now when you get above the ear, the head is changing shape and you're adding more hair to the cut. Don't be overwhelmed because this is all that is going to change. You're going to take this down and you're gonna comb this back a little bit to meet your guide. So you're not combing it forward and you're not combing it straight down. You're taking this, over directing just a little bit to cut it back. What this is going to do is going to ensure that you don't create a hole a lot of times and you may have had a bad experience getting a haircut where you have a hole because the hairdresser didn't allow for your ear that your ear sticks out and creates this gap. So that's going to make sure that we don't create that whoop de doop de hole. So again, you're taking your comb, combing it slightly back or over directing it to meet your guide. We're still holding it against our body and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see through here my guide, peekabooing at me. So I'm gonna cut against that. Now, when we comb this out, we've got a pretty straight horizontal line. Now, don't be alarmed if yours isn't exactly straight. As long as it's pretty much straight, we're gonna refine it a little bit in the end. But if you see like, oh wow, I have a huge chunk right here, please correct that. And you can just do that by combing this straight against your skin and you can kind of cut against your body. Okay, you ready? We're gonna match the other side that goes above the ear. So again, taking our subsection down, combing this up, combing all the kinks, all the rats out, taking our comb, combing this back or over directing it, not combing straight down, but a little bit back, taking crab claws to hold it all together. And don't get overwhelmed because it is a lot of hair and it is the opposite side for me. Just give yourself some grace, you're doing good. Comb it back, find our guide. Here's my guide right here. Try not to cut my shirt. Just cut a straight line. When I release my hair, comb it forward. It should be a pretty straight line. Now we're gonna check for balance just by feeling, making sure again our feet are flat, our back is straight. We're just feeling, we're not looking, we're feeling. Now we're also gonna do the eyeball test and look and make sure this looks even, looks good enough to me. Continue on. And it's the same technique, taking a half an inch subsection down, over directing or combing it back, holding it against our skin, trying to grab it with crab claws or any way that you can. And there's my guide right there, peekabooing out. So I'm actually gonna cut above my knuckles this time because it's getting to be a lot of hair. Feel free to do the same because it does get a little overwhelming when you start adding so much hair. You may have to release some of the back. All you really need is a little tiny guide to see that length. Combing it over, making sure I don't have any whoopsie daisies or mountains. If I have a mountain, take a deep breath. I'm just gonna shave it off. And it's the same thing, comb it back. Find my guide, I'm gonna cut above my knuckles for this part, cut. Oops, I actually may have cut that a little bit, that little part a little short, that's okay. Last section on the bigger side or the thicker side, combing it back. I see my guide cutting above my knuckles, cleaning up that little mountain there. Now, once you're done, it should be pretty much straight across in the back. So here's the back of mine. 
And I believe mine does have a little bit of curve, but I'm happy with it. I don't mind that. The technique that we did is a very blunt haircut, very straight across, which I'm not really like a trendy person, but I think this is a trendy style right now, this blunt, very straight across, dark, kind of shorter cut. That's what I'm going for. So I'm actually gonna leave mine blunt. But if you want yours to be more refined or textured or feathered or softer, if you will, you're gonna wanna point cut that. I have a video up here that you can watch that explains it in a lot of detail. But to go over that quickly, point cutting is just taking the hair and you can over direct this hair in front of you. It, it will be fine. And you're just using the tip of the scissors or the shears. And you're going up, 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 to feather it out. Now you don't wanna to go to the side, to the side, to the side, because that's gonna take out a lot of weight. We're just going up, 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 up. A little bit of layers on the side face framing so it's not so, whoo. This technique is called slide cutting and that's where you take the belly of the shear, the inside, and you slide against the hair shaft. It mocks the razor, and you may find if you don't want any layers, you may want at the very least do that to these. Our head holds a lot of weight in these two back corners, so think of if your head was square and you put an X in the middle, there would be these two corners here and here, but we don't have them because we don't grow head on our, our hair, excuse me, on our forehead. So a lot of times you'll gather weight here that you may need to get rid of, and you can just take a sliver, shave off the bottom because that's your length in case you make a mistake. Comb this, and we're doing all this vertically. Open up our shears, take the belly, and just kind of slide it down. Now my shears or scissors are really dull, so they're not gonna take off a whole lot of weight. But if you've got a, a new pair and a super sharp pair, be very, very careful. Taking this, sliding it down. You're not ink, 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 ink. That's a different technique. You're gliding. Graceful, ladies and gents. Grace. And I just do that all over my haircut. This is a really good technique for hair extensions, coarse, thick hair, textured hair. Pretty much a good technique for anybody, but super, super thin, fine hair, except for the corners. If you have very thin, fine hair, you really don't want it to look any more finer or thinner, you know what I mean? So actually the best haircut for you is a blunt, shorter cut. If you have super, super fine, thin hair like I do, my real hair is very, very thin, fine. So the best haircut for me is about collarbone length and blunt, straight across, face framing layers, cutting out the corners and that's it. No layering the back, that makes it look thinner. And I don't know about my bangs, if I want to do, yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the bang. I'm just gonna twist them and trim them. I have a video on these, these are Bardot bangs or curtain bangs. You're welcome to watch that, but I'm just gonna give mine a little refine or trim. So I'm gonna match this on the other side and I'm gonna go through and blow dry this and I'll show it to you straight and then I'm gonna style it because I'm going somewhere later and I want it to be like a loose wave. Okay, so I will be right back. Now I do have a little bit of imperfections. I've got a little unevenness. We'll just go through and kind of clean that up but it sure as hell beats me paying $50 to go get a haircut. You know what I mean? So when it's dry, this is when you'll wanna go through and correct anything that you may see need to be corrected. Again, the point cutting, taking it up and just going up, 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 up. That will feather it out if this is too blunt for you. I'm gonna keep mine, uh, I'll point cut the ends a little bit. And these are like the worst scissors I've ever had, but they still work, they still cut folks. They still do it. Do a little bit more layering here. And so this is nice. I like this length because here is my real hair. So it's pretty close to my real hair length. It's adding like two inches. Cause I mainly wear these hair extensions for thickness. I do not have very thick hair at all. It's actually super thin and fine. So this just kind of helps me 
have a little bit more confidence. Because being a bald hairdresser, like unintentionally bald, you don't want to be bald, is the worst. But my hair is getting better. It's definitely a process. And if you're new here, it's like medical reasons why my hair is non-existent, but it is a lot better than it was two years ago. And I do have a lot of weight. See what I mean? Those corners, that's too thick of a section. Those corners will really weigh you down and just make your hair look boxy. So we gotta get rid of those things. Also your hair, if you're doing this, shouldn't be making like a noise like that. These scissors are just, I think these are like doll scissors. These are really bad. That's all right, I'll have it. Let me go get the flat iron and I'll show you a really quick beach wave. Hang on. I'm using this Bionic flat iron to do these waves. And again, I have like an in-depth tutorial if you wanna do flat iron waves, but pretty much all you need to know is if you're gonna do flat iron waves, you need to have a beveled flat iron, and that just means that the actual plate has a curve. If it doesn't, it's going to and snag the hair, and it's going to not only damage your hair, but not create a wave or curl. This is linked in the description box below, but honestly, if I didn't have a salon, like I would just use one from Walmart because they're pretty much the same thing. This is no better or worse than a $40 one. So I'll show you one really quick and then I'm just gonna speed through it and then I'll show you the final result. But you take your flat iron, smoothing iron, whatever you wanna call it, take your hair. I always like to kinda soften the top so it matches like it's smooth on the top. Take it, turning it once and angling it at a 45 degree angle, pointing it down. I'm going for a very loose wave. Sliding and gliding it through, and ta-da! And it'll look kind of like this, like a spiral curl, but once I brush them all out in sea salt spray, it'll be this really loose wave. So I'll be right back. So here it is after the flat iron curls, and I just put some Mr. Mondo's X Mondo Salty Sea Salt Spray in it. I really like this. I mean, it kind of took me a while to figure out how to use it. And it looks better after it's set in your hair for like an hour, so this will drop. But here's the back. I love it. I wish it would have been a little bit shorter. Again, it's not perfect, but it's perfect to me because I saved myself some money doing it myself in my bathroom. All right, ladies. Gentlemen, hey, days and gays, thanks again for joining me here in my bathroom. Comment below what you think, or if you try this, let me know. As always, I'm here for you every single week, twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays, so make sure you subscribe and like to join me. Turn that little ding-a-lingy bell on so we don't miss anything, folks, because it gets crazy around here sometimes. I can't wait to see you on Sunday for Sunday service. No idea what we're doing, but it's the Lord's work, folks. We just make a really big deal out of ordinary things on a Sunday. I will see you then for something cool. Something.